Well, hi there. Here we are in the workshop with our amazing 1976 Goblin Housemaid. Now, in this video, we are going to take this cleaner apart, see what's inside, see what kind of a state it's in, and I get to show you just how dangerous this machine is under the cover. Let's have a look. <laughs> I have memories of working on these cleaners. It's been a long time since I've actually taken one apart to really work on it. And it is probably 27, 28 years now since I've actually been inside one of these. Now I know that this one does have a few issues. There's like a rattling sound going on when you use it, when you actually use it to clean, not just stand it up and run it. So we need to find out what that is. Also, there's something a bit odd going on with the ratchet. If you push this forward, this dust box forward, the machine goes past the point of, um, of, of, of being held upright. So it leans forward somewhat. And I've noticed that the chassis is a little bit damaged underneath. So that's probably why that's happening. Uh, I, I can explain this to you when we get inside the machine. Um, as as to what's going on, but uh, yeah, this is this is going to be interesting. I think we should just take the dust box off first, if we can just gingerly get this off. So we're just left with the head of the cleaner. Let's get that out of the way. There we go. It's delicate. This is delicate seventies plastic. I do need to have a think as well about um, what I'm going to do with it. How I'm going to bring this colour back. It should retrobrite using the um, uh, method with the oxy action powder. However, I have to say I am a little bit reticent to put this delicate plastic through that trauma. It should be okay. It's things like this, this lamp lens here, I don't want that to be damaged, but at the same time, it's going to be very difficult to get that out without breaking it because this is, it's all very delicate, very cheap plastic. So yeah, I don't know how we're going to get on with that, but that's for later what we're doing now is getting inside it and seeing what it's like inside so i'm going to move you so you have a better view let's flip the machine over so we can get to the underside and we will take the hood off and it's very very simple on this cleaner there's four screws one two three four hopefully you can see that all right it's a very big base this so um, hopefully you've got a decent view Interestingly, on this model, you'll see here, there's a two-speed switch. So when you put the tools in, it boosts, in quote marks, the power of the motor upwards. So you get more suction and more airflow. Now, on our later house mode that we've seen previously, we, we don't have that. Because this machine uses a pan converter, um, whereas our late one doesn't. So I'm just going to take out these screws. That's our four screws removed. Now you can see here at this point that uh, the the chassis is cracked. And I suspect that is why the machine's leaning forward. So we're gonna to have to try and repair that. I don't, I don't know if that's a crack or just a scratch. That might be a scratch there. But the rest of the base is pretty good. So that's a positive. Let's flip this thing over. Now I'm gonna take this hood off now. And uh, bearing in mind that the end user had to do this in order to change the belt. There's no other way to change the belt on the housemaid apart from removing the entire hood. Now what is in here would just not be allowed on a modern vacuum cleaner. The fact that the user exposes themselves to everything that's in this hood. So let's try and wiggle this off. It hasn't been off for a long, long time. I'm try and be careful. There we go, that should release. Like so, and there we go, we're inside. So this is the inside of our housemaid. Now I find this fascinating, frankly. It is amazing to think that they made it like this. It, 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 <laughs> it kind of boggles my mind because bearing in mind that there's nothing on here that says you must unplug this machine before you start working on it. So 
people are not very clever, so they may have left it plugged in, um, turned on. But just the press of the pedal will start the machine up. So not only are you exposed to a brush roll that can spin round and bite you, your fingers, not only are you exposed to the motor itself, but you're also exposed to the terminal block. And just look at this mess. I, think I, I, I need to bring you a bit closer. I'm going to turn. I'm going to hold you in my hand. I'm going to hold you in my hand and bring you in close to see this terminal block. It is utterly insane. Look at it all. Look at all these wires. Just all exposed terminals. You can like you can slide the block out like that. You see, there's the um, suppressor there, and it's just utterly mental. You would never, ever be able to do that in these modern times. It is so incredibly dangerous. Just everything is exposed here. It's mental. And there's the classic Goblin tin can motor in all of its dubious glory. Oh, hang on. Well, we, we do have a warning here. Uh, disconnect from supply before removing this cover. Well, that's handy, isn't it? So, yeah, we can leave the machine plugged in. Look, here, yeah, look, just the terminals are exposed on the live for the switch. I mean, it's just incredible. Utterly, utterly incredible. Now that's interesting, look, does, does that come off? Oh, it does come off. Well, it should do. Yes, it does. Now, if you remember on the, on the later Housemaid, this was the aperture for the tools um, that pushed in. You can see the fan down the end of the ducting there. So there was a cutout on the side of the hood that allowed you to um, to insert the hose. Uh, but on this machine, it's covered up because as I mentioned earlier, it uses the pan converter style of tools. So <laughs> I just had to show you that really. It is just unbelievably dangerous, Un unbelievably dangerous. Um, oh God, I just can't believe that they did it. Uh, yeah, the belt is, a, the belt's not too bad. So let's, Let's get this off. Oh, this bloody thing here. Look, you've got this guide to stop it from chewing into the side of the uh, hood. But it's difficult to get out. Hang on, let's, let's get the brush roll out. There we go. That's where, that's where we should start. So non, non ball race bearings on the brush roll, just uh, sleeve bearings. Let's pull that out. Let's have a look at the brush roll itself. Well, that mm, there's a tiny, tiny bit of play in uh, the, the brush roll, but <laughs> we're never going to get a replacement, so probably going to have to live with that. Um, so I think what we should do, see this seems a bit loose, you can probably see that there. You see that moving? That ain't right. And I suspect that may be one of the reasons why we have the vibration. I think what we should do is remove the motor, just, just take this out uh, and run it out of the machine. So let's remove the ducting, which shouldn't be too tricky. Get some screws around here. That should be them. I'm going to need my little magnetic pickup here. One, two, three, four. So that's the ducting screws. Um, and there's two screws down here as well. Then out, pick it up. Oops. There we are. And now, all things being even, the ducting should come out. It should come away. Let's see. Is it going to do it? Yes. Ah, there we go. Okay, so we take the ducting off. Um, and now, actually, if I move this up like that, you can see the you can see the boost switch, which is just here. We've got this micro switch here at this point. Now, when you put the pan converter in, it pushes on this peg, or at least it should do, but I think it's broken. <laughs> so that shouldn't be like that, unless it pushes it up. Oh, I might push it up, actually. Yeah, I'm sorry. I think it pushes it up and then pushes it in, and then that effectively boosts the power. But that's interesting. Look, you can, you can lock it in place. So that's locked in place now. So that's like that's locked off. 
and then if you raise it you kind of push it and raise it raise it up and push it over then did that work oh perhaps it's meant to be in that position oh i think it's meant to be in that position actually oh i wonder i wonder if what's happened here ah there we go that's why this screw is loose in fact i think the, i think the thread's gone on that on that screw actually yeah i think the thread's gone but that's probably why so it should be in that position naturally and then when the pan converter is pushed in it will boost the power of the motor using the the micro switch hmm interesting someone's been in in here as well look you see these scratch marks someone's cleaned this that's interesting um and we need to find a bulb for it as well so hopefully you can see down there if you can see the bulb holder so that looks like um an sbc bulb and i think we might have an sbc so we can more than likely put a bulb in the cleaner um first of all i think the very first thing we should do is get rid of this suppressor i think that would be wise because that's obviously going to go bang at some point oh where did that come from did that come from there oh see this is the thing it's horrible it's just so horrible trying to work out what goes where and where it's come from it's a nightmare now can i pull this suppressor out like that no i can't no nope, that's not coming out so we've got this one white wire here so let's take that off follow this blue wire that goes to here take that off and then we have this brown wire here take that off so now we can remove this horrible suppressor there we go so that's nice and easy at least that's one thing you can say on the housemaid it is nice and easy to remove the suppressor now do we have a date on here i think it just says made in west germany well oh interestingly that could be 979 i just need to i don't know if you'll be able to see that guys i think it says 979 yeah, I put money on that saying 979. So this machine could be from 1979, which would make sense. Yeah, I've sort of wondered if this was an earlier machine or a later machine. It's very hard to tell, frankly. Um, because there's no real clues or anything on it. But yeah, okay. So uh, you can see the complexity of the loom here. Um, now we can lose this wire now. This one can go because that went to the suppressor. So let's take that out, pull that through the terminal block, and it's actually soldered onto the onto the motor. I'm going to turn my soldering iron on because we can desolder that from this point here on the motor. I think what we'll do is we'll leave the ducting as it is, uh, and we'll try and take this out now. Let's. Can I take, no, I can't take the note because I've got to take this stupid thing out. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I remember this. This is all like, oh, oh so annoyingly made. Oh, God damn it, goblin. So we can do that and then let's leave that back in there. So the motor is almost free, but you'll notice that because this is a twin speed motor, we now have three wires here. We have three, three wires coming out from the motor. So what's what, what's happening is um, uh, when you have the, the micro switch in this open position, only half of the field coil is being energized. So you effectively get half speed. When you close this micro switch, you use all of the field coil. Hence, you get full speed. So it's kind of like a crude uh, method. Oh, I don't know, what would you call it, crude? I don't know, actually. Maybe, maybe crude is not the correct word for it. I think different. Yeah, different. I'm just trying to think what other machines use this style of twin speed. There were a few. There were a few that did this. I mean, the Hoover Senior, when you slid the tools in the back, uh, you got a boost in motor speed or motor power um, and that if effectively utilized exactly the same method that that was exactly the same as the housemaid does it now i am very dubious about disconnecting all of these wires i really don't want to do it 
however, let me see what have we got. Pink, yellow, and blue. Pink, yellow, and blue. So if we go uh, blue to blue, yellow to yellow, pink to pink. Oh, okay. No, I think actually, yeah, we can do that safely because they all match up. So yeah, that should that should be all right. Trouble is running it. How do you run it like that? Because you've got these two wires. I think what I might do is tell you what. Let's pop this back down. Let's pop this back down. This is, quite, this is a bit of a rambling video, I'm sorry, but uh, I'm just trying to do this the best way, and it's a bit tricky. So we've got some heat in the soldering iron. Let's see if we can desolder this. There we go. Right, let's get rid of that wire. We absolutely do not need that anymore. Turn the soldering iron off. Chuck that over there. Now, whilst I was holding this then, I was just feeling the, the top bearing, and I, I think, you may not be able to hear that, but I think there is some play. It's not horizontal movement, or is it? It's very hard to, it's very hard to work out. But <clears throat> enough waffling, let's just try and run this. Let's, let's run this motor on the bench like, like this, and we'll see what it sounds like. And this is very tricky because we've got to make sure nothing's touching. Um, let me pick up the uh, flex. Hopefully, you can see that. Yes, you can. Oh, get off the door. For God's sake. Right. Right. Okay. Let's try this. Let's just push that down. <laughs> Oh yeah, there is a definite, definite grumble there. I thought so. I thought so. I thought that 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 it's the top bearing. I think this this rear one is fine. This one's okay, um, but it's the top one that is actually not great. Now that is a shame, guys. That is a real shame because we know that these tin can motors are a massive pain in the bum. <laughs> <So> <laughs> Mmm, how are we gonna do this? Well, I tell you what, let's just uh let's just put this out so we know that these wires correspond to the terminal block, so that's good. I feel this is going to be a multi-part video. We're not gonna get this machine sorted in one try. Uh let's just whip that out. Oh, difficult. They must have threaded these through, then put the spades on. Lovely. So that is the motor free of the chassis. And we can pop all this back in. Pop the ducting back in. Mm, that's a bit knackered, isn't it? That's the seal that goes on the... Oh dear. Yeah, that's not good. All right. That's not good. Yeah, yeah, okay. Let's pop this back on. I'm going in. Yeah. Ducting back in place. Hopefully. There we go. Good. Let's let's leave that out for now. There we go. Right. So we can put the chassis away because we will definitely be coming back to that to repair some bits on it. <clears throat> and obviously we need to put a new bulb in there as well. But for now, we have our motor assembly. Uh, I've got an idea, actually. I've got an idea. I don't know if you guys will like it, but I, I've got an idea. Let's whip this off. Let's have a look at the fan, shall we? This will be a massive fan. It's going to be huge. There we go. One housemade fan. Oh, yeah. There's definite movement there. You might even be able to see it, actually, guys. Yeah, it's the top bearing. Mm, dearie me. Top bearing on a housemaid. Top bearing on a housemaid. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. We pop down to our local spares store and uh, pick up a bearing for a 1979 Goblin housemaid, shall we? 
Good luck with that. Yeah. Okay, let's get this fan off. It's not playing ball. It's been like it's been on there a long time. Come on, you. You're gonna come off. Oh, oh God, that is really, oh, really on there. Oh, oh, jeez. Oh, wow. That is. Oh, that is. So, <laughs> that is so on there. My God. Ah, oh, there we go. Got him. Yeah. Thank you very much. Metal on metal. No, oh, no, there's the balancing um, indentations, like we saw on the McDonald. Interesting. Um, and we've got a whole load of spacers. Or is it just one? No, it's just one spacer. Just one spacer. Okay, let's take this off, take the grips off. And now we can whip the fan chamber off. Hold on a minute. Oh, that's interesting. Where's that like that? I've just seen that there's um you can see it, there's a hole here that there's a hole. Why is there a hole there? It's actually a hole in the moulding and it's covered by this. Look, perhaps that covered up like that, but why is it there? Why why is that there? That can't be Surely that's too uniform to have happened by accident. No, right. take that off. And we are left with our tin can. Let's just vacuum that off a little bit. Yeah, that, that bearing has definitely failed. I'm going to hold this up to the camera. Hopefully you can see it. Very hard to see, but I can definitely feel that the bearing is moving in there. Look at that funny little motor. It's hilarious, isn't it? <laughs> it's just so silly. Mm. Now, <sighs> I need to think about this. What are we going to do with this motor? Before we do that, however, I just thought we need to look at this. And look at that there. Look, that almost looks like, you can see it, very tricky to see. That looks like it's been worn away by something. Look, it, it doesn't look uniform. It looks like something's happened, but how how would that happen how would that that's really confusing that is really 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 confusing if the fans are there like that it's almost as if something was like attached to the to a vein that has been just eating away as it spun past each time it's just been eating away at that at that edge there but i don't understand how that could happen it's it's very odd i think i would kind of well i i need another housemaid to look at that to see if that is an actual moulding hole or if it's just just been worn away. I'm 50-50 on that, to be completely honest with you. It's really odd. Never seen that before. Very strange. Very, very strange. Although, that's quite cool. Look, so that's the original blue. And then that's the colour we have now. So, it's definite fading. Definite fading. Oh, hi. Oh, goodness me. Don't sneak up on me like that. I'm an old man. I've got a weak heart. So, what are we going to do with this then? We've got a couple of options. Number one, obviously, is replace this top bearing here. But the question is, what size is that bearing? And we won't know until we have taken this tin can apart. Now that is a massive, massive pain in the ass because as we've talked about in the past, these motors are not bolted or screwed. They are riveted together. You can see the rivets here. There we go. Rivet. 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 And not only that, not only are the two halves of the motor riveted together, 
the bearings are riveted in, in to the end frames. Rivet, rivet. Now that is a pain. It is a gigantic pain in the bum. <sighs> I'm in two minds of even trying to do it, to be quite honest with you. However, I need to, I need to do it. I need to drill, I need to drill it all out and I need to get into this motor and I need to, to take that bearing out because I need to know what size it is. I can't do anything until I know what size that bearing is. Hopefully it is the same size as a Hoover turbo power bearing. Now, I'm just going to pause you for a sec and I'm going to find a turbo power bearing. Ha <laughs> ha, found one. You would not believe how long it took me to find that flipping bearing. That was ridiculous. I need to sort this workshop out. It is utterly, utterly bonkers. So I'm just seeing for size there. Will that fit on the shaft of the housemaid? That fits that end. It should. Oh yeah, there we go. So if I hold it up to you there, look. Hopefully that is a 608ZZ. 608ZZ, yeah. Yeah, there we go. So hopefully we would be able to um, put that in there. It looks like it would fit. I think it will. So what we'll do in the next episode is we'll put this bearing in this motor. And that will take a while because we've got a lot of drilling and swearing to do on this. God, awful tin can things. Rubbish, utter rubbish. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I certainly did. It's been a, a long time since I've been inside a housemaid. My God, that sounds really dodgy. That sounds really dodgy. Can I just say for legal reasons, I have never been inside a housemaid. Thank you very much. So anyway, until next time, you guys take care. Don't forget to do the usual commenting, subscribing and liking, and I'll see you soon. Bye.